Hi, today I'm going to break down the Hardy Weinberg principle. And if you find this video to be helpful, please subscribe to my channel. And that way YouTube will be more likely to recommend this video for other people looking for help. So what is the Hardy-Weinberg equation? Well, it was come up by English mathematician Hardy and German physician Weinberg, and essentially it's a statistical tool that allows us to see if evolution is or is not occurring in a population. The results of this equation, and by looking at the different variables, we can see whether the allele frequencies in a population are changing or not. So it's as simple as looking at one point in time and then looking at another point in time and seeing if there's a different frequency of alleles. You could kind of equate it to like looking back at your wardrobe five years ago. Okay, maybe you had a lot of black clothing and not as much blue clothing. Now, five years later, present day, you look at your clothing and you say, do I still have the same percentage of black clothing and blue clothing, right? Have my clothing clothing preferences not changed? Or do I now have lots more uh, blue clothing than black clothing, right? So it's really just a way to compare the alleles in a population from one time to another. And I'm going to break it down for you and you'll see how easy it actually is. Now I want to highlight that we're talking about a population, okay? So we're looking at not one individual tiger and whether that tiger changes over time, but we're looking at a population, a group of tigers or a group of humans or a group of grasshoppers to see if the alleles in that population change over time. Now there are some important terminology that we need to remember, such as allele, genotype, and phenotype. And if these words sound a little confusing to you, do check out the card that I've put above. It's a quick video that breaks down what all these terms are and how they're different from each other. But just as a quick review to make sure we're all on the same page, an allele is a version of a particular gene. Okay, so if we're talking about the gene for hair color, right, there are different alleles, different versions out there. There's a black hair allele, brown hair, blonde hair, and red hair allele. So those are the different versions that exist in the human population. Now, the genotype is when two of those alleles, one from mom and one from dad, come together. So the genotype is both alleles, both chromosomes that you have, right? So in the case of your genotype for hair color, maybe you received a brown allele from dad and a black allele from mom, right? That's your genotype, is both of those alleles together. So when we talk about allele, we're just talking about a single version. When we talk about genotype, we're talking about the two together. And now we can start to see whether one is dominant or over the other one, which we would call recessive. Now, the phenotype is the outward expression of that genotype. So, for instance, if you have a brown allele from dad and, let's say, a blonde allele from mom, you're going to have brown hair because brown is dominant over the blonde allele. So, what you see, that outward expression, that's the phenotype of the genotype that you have. Now let's relate this to the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Let's say we have two different alleles for a gene. One is big T and one is little t. Big T is the capital one, so that's the dominant allele. Little t, that's the recessive version of the gene. So these are our two allele options. Now the Hardy-Weinberg equation is going to use the letter P for the dominant allele and Q for the recessive allele. So it's kind of like using X and Y, except they're using P and Q. Now you sort of have to remember which one's the dominant allele and which one's the recessive allele because neither one is capitalized. So I just keep in mind like P's and Q's, right? It's an alphabetical order, first P, then Q. So first we're gonna have the dominant one, P, and then the recessive allele is gonna be Q. So that's step one. In the Hardy-Weinberg equation, P is the dominant allele, Q is the recessive allele. Now, when we think about the two alleles we have here, big T and little t, that's all the different versions of the gene out there in a population. So if you add up all the big T alleles with all the little t alleles, that equals 100% of the alleles in the population. Or we can turn that into frequency. And we use frequency when we're dealing with a high Weinberg equation. So instead of saying big T plus little t equals 100%, we see big T plus little t equals one, right? You can multiply the frequency by 100 to get a percentage. Uh, for instance, a frequency of 0.2 is the same thing as 20%. And when we're working with the Hardy-Weinberg equation, we're going to keep everything in frequency. So instead of big T plus little t equals 100, 
big T plus little t equals one. Now let's transfer that over though using our P's and Q's. So in essence, the first part of the Hardy-Weinberg theorem is that P plus Q equals one. Now I've put that in red here because we're gonna have to remember this equation in order to really succeed with the Hardy-Weinberg equation. So for example, when we're looking at this gene T, the allele's big T plus little t equals one. And if big T is 40% of the population, then that means little t is 60% of the population. That equals 100%. But again, we're going to work with frequencies. So the frequency of 0.4 for big T plus 0.6 for little t equals one. And we can transfer that over and put it in the speak of Hardy-Weinberg, where P plus Q equals one. So if P is 0.4, Q is 0.6, because that equals one. See how that works? That's step one. So remember that P is the dominant allele frequency, like 0.4, and Q is the recessive allele frequency, or 0.6. And again, we're talking about the frequency of the alleles in a population of organisms. So P is the dominant allele frequency, Q is the recessive allele frequency. That's when we're talking about individual alleles. Now, part of the Hardy-Weinberg theorem also addresses the genotypes. Remember, the genotypes are when two alleles come together. So remember Punnett squares? If you're using a Punnett square to figure out how these alleles can come together into genotypes, you see that if we start with heterozygous individuals, meaning they have one big T and one little t, then they can come together in three different ways. We can have big T, big T. We can have two that are heterozygous or big T, little t, and we can have one that's homozygous recessive. That means little t, little t. So now we can use the P and Q terminology for the same thing, okay? So P is the dominant allele, so we can have P, P. We also can have one P and one Q, that's a heterozygous. And we know that if we start with heterozygous individuals that are mating, we can have two of those, right? PQ and QP, which is the same thing. And then we can have QQ, which would be an individual with two of the homozygous recessive alleles. So when we're talking about these different options, we know that PP means that's the homozygous dominant uh, genotype. We can have two PQs, that's an individual with one dominant and one recessive allele, or the heterozygous genotype, and we can have individuals with two recessive alleles, QQ, that's homozygous recessive genotype. So instead of just using PP, PQ, QQ, we can actually use P squared to mean the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype. We use two PQ, for the frequency of the heterozygous genotype. And remember, there's a two in there because when we look at our Punnett square, there are two heterozygous individuals. So we can't just use PQ, we have to use two PQ because there's two of those for, uh, for every homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive individual. And so instead of QQ for the homozygous recessive individual, we can use Q squared. Okay, so our options for homozygous dominance genotype frequency are P squared, the heterozygous genotype frequency is 2PQ, and the homozygous recessive genotype frequency is Q squared. Those are our options of how these alleles can come together statistically in a population. And if you think about it, that's everything, right? So in a population where there's dominant allele P and recessive allele Q, how can they come together? Well, you can have P squared, 2PQ or Q squared. So this is the other part of the Hardy-Weinberg equation. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals one. So when we think of the Hardy-Weinberg theorem, we wanna think of two different equations that will help us figure out these problems. The first one is P plus Q equals one. And the second one is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals one. Now, in the case of P plus Q equals one, remember that's when we're talking about just the alleles, just whether it's the dominant allele or the recessive allele, okay? The alleles, not the genotypes. When we talk about P squared plus two PQ plus Q squared equals one, that's when we're talking about the genotypes. And we have three options. We can have P squared, that's gonna be the frequency of homozygous dominance genotype. We can have two PQ, that's gonna be the frequency of the heterozygous genotype, 
or we can have Q squared. And that's going to be the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype. I put a big gold star here. So when you're remembering, trying to remember these equations, you can come back, find that gold star and see that these are the two equations that we need so that we can work and figure out problems with the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Okay, so we're understanding these are the two equations that we need to use. Let's just give an example so I can show you how generally they're used, okay? So here, for instance, P plus Q equals one. We know that P is the dominant allele, Q is the recessive allele. So let's say in this case, P, the dominant allele is 0.37, okay? That's 37% of the population possesses the dominant allele. And Q is the recessive allele. So within the population, 0.63 is the frequency of the recessive allele, aka 63%. Okay, so there's two options for allele. There's the dominant and the recessive, aka P and Q. And if P is 0.37, then Q has to be 0.63 because that has to equal 1. Now let's look at P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared. These are the genotypes. Now P squared is the homozygous dominant genotype. And in this case, the frequency in this population is 0.14. 2PQ, that's the frequency of people or individuals that have one of each, right? They're heterozygous. They have one dominant and one recessive. That's 0.46. And Q squared is the frequency of individuals that have two recessive alleles. They're homozygous recessive. And that's 0.4. So where we have two alleles, okay, P plus Q equals one, we have the dominant and the recessive allele. The other equation shows us how those alleles can come together. We can have PP come together, right? That's P squared. And in this case, the frequency is 0.14. We can have the heterozygotes who have one dominant and one recessive. That's 0.46 in this case. And Q squared, those are the homozygous recessive individuals that have two recessive copies of the gene. And so we notice that 0.14, 0 0.46, 0 and 0.4 equal 1. If you think about it, these are the only ways that the alleles can come together into these three different types of genotypes. So that has to equal 100% of the population. So when you're working with the hardy wernberg equation, make sure to check yourself so that all of your different genotypes add up to one. And similarly, if you're looking at the alleles, P and Q individually, those two are going to add up to one as well. Okay, so remember that when we look at P plus Q equals one, we're talking about the dominant allele frequency and the recessive allele frequency. When we're looking at P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared, we're talking about how those alleles can come together into the genotypes. So P squared, that represents the homozygous dominant genotype frequency. 2PQ is the frequency of the heterozygous genotype, those individuals that have one recessive and one dominant allele. And Q squared is the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype. Great. So the Hardy-Weinberg equation shows us the frequency of the alleles, P and Q, and the frequency of the different genotypes, P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared. Let's take a look at how we might use this, okay? So we have our frequencies here of the alleles on the left and the genotypes on the right. Now, let's say this was at a certain point in time, and we come back and we figure out what the frequencies are maybe 10 years later when we're looking at a population. So let's say this is a population of ladybugs, okay? So the frequencies of some particular allele or genotype are shown here. Now, let's say that we come back in 10 years, and these are our frequencies, okay? Whereas initially, the dominant allele P was 0.37, now it's 0.35 10 years later. Similarly, Q, the recessive allele, was 0.63 then, and 10 years later, it's 0.65. When we look at these numbers, they haven't changed much, right? And you can use P and Q to figure out P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared, right? Because 0.37 squared is going to be 0.14. And 0.37 times 0.63 times 2, that's 2PQ, that's 0.46. So we're really talking about the same P and Q values in this case. So even if we look over at the genotypes at P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared, those numbers haven't changed much over the 10 years as well. So this equation is helpful in allowing us to look and say, well, look, if, if the population's genes changed, if evolution of this population had occurred, then we would see a change in the allele frequency. But we don't see that here, okay? We see that 10 years ago, 
the frequency of P was 0.37, the frequency of Q was 0.63. And now 10 years later, the frequency of P, the dominant allele is 0.35 and Q, the recessive allele is 0.65. That's really not much changed in the past 10 years. So this particular gene we're looking at in ladybugs, the frequency of those alleles hasn't changed. There's the same proportion of dominant alleles and recessive alleles now as there was 10 years ago. Now, let's see, this happens instead. We come back 10 years later and we see this instead, where 10 years ago, the frequency of the dominant allele was 0.37 and now it's 0.68. Or you can check, right? It should be the same thing that if the dominant allele was 0.37, then the recessive allele was 0.63 then. But now it's 32% of our ladybug population has that recessive allele. And we can compare 10 years ago to now, and we see that's a big change, right? We see that certainly there's a lot more of the dominant allele now than there were 10 years ago. And similarly, that means there's a lot less of the recessive allele now than 10 years ago. So now we see the population has changed. There's a higher frequency of dominant alleles than recessive alleles now. So with this particular gene, there's been a change. Evolution has occurred over the last 10 years. Now, why is that? Well, there's lots of different means through which evolution can occur, like natural selection, for instance. What if this was a gene for a ladybug uh, that encoded like a color on their shell? And the dominant allele allowed them to blend in more. Well, over the past 10 years, right, that gene that allows them to be camouflaged means that they're not going to be eaten by predators as much. And so those with the recessive allele maybe are seen and they're eaten. And so fewer of them survive to create the next generation. And over many generations, over 10 years, we see this change in the population. OK, that's that's evolution. And we see it reflected here. So this is how we use the Hardy Weinberg principle. If evolution is occurring, there's going to be a change in the allele frequencies that we see. And subsequently, that means there's also going to be a change in the genotype frequencies. So we can focus on the alleles, but we know that if the allele frequencies change, then the genotype frequencies, P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared, those are going to change as well. And we see that's the case in our example here. So this was an explanation of what the Hardy-Weinberg principle is the equations that are part of it, and what you might expect to see in populations that are evolving or not evolving. If you're interested in maybe trying some Hardy-Weinberg practice questions, check out my video on Hardy-Weinberg practice questions, where we'll walk through some real life examples and some numbers and try to derive the frequencies of the alleles and the genotypes.